Hey, this is AVUnit4A for CollectionDX.com. In this review, I will be highlighting the transformation, special features, and other notables of the VF1A Super Valkyrie Maximilian Genius version from the 1984 feature film Super Dimensional Fortress Macross Do You Remember Love? This particular set belongs to the Origin of Valkyrie line, which was issued in 2008 to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the beginning of the Macross saga in 1982. While the Takatoku Valkyrie has been around since 1982, coinciding with the release of the original series, this particular repaint has not been issued as far as the 155 scale Valkyries go. Uh, it is a movie exclusive, so you see it only in the movie in this particular coloring scheme. While Max Genius does pilot a VF-1A earlier on in you know his, his role in the series, uh, it's not in this coloring style, and even later on, uh, when he upgrades to a VF-1J, he may have the blue, and he may have the white, and he may even have a little red, but he doesn't have the black on there. The coloring for this particular set is based on the Roy Foker special, which is exclusive pretty much to the VF-1S Valkyrie. In the movie, Max is a pilot in uh, Skull Squadron aboard the Macross, so all of the pilots who fly in Skull Squadron have a color designation that is based off of the Roy Foker special livery. In Max's particular case, as opposed to yellow or red, he has blue. Otherwise, the black stripes, the, uh, the skull and crossbones, the, the painting, general paint effects, it's all based on the Roy Foker special. So here we are starting out in fighter mode. Landing gear is spring powered on that tab. Back landing gear are also spring powered. I like this it actually has the doors. It actually close up gives it a nice clean finish to it and then you just push up on these tabs. And there. And these are these will wiggle loose whatever. The laser cannon turret can twist side to side easily enough. You can also point up and down and the VF1A model, the particular Valkyrie model, uh, the advantage to this one is that you don't have to turn the laser cannon barrels up and down in order to twist the head side to side. It's the only one you can do that. So The wings are a bit of an anomaly. Um, in, the, in the series and in the movie, uh, the VF1 type Valkyries do uh, always have their wings diagonal like this, or they'll have them tilted back like this for supersonic mode, We'll have them tilted back even far further when they're in storage form. However, with this Takotoku Valkyrie, and I don't know if this is a Bandai thing or if this is a Takotoku Toys thing, because Takotoku obviously fell under before the movie was released, uh, but the wings can, for whatever reason, they tilt out to per perpendicular 90 degrees. Now, why this is, I have no idea. I've never seen a Valkyrie with wings 90 degrees like that. I always see them back like that. Now they may have slats that open and close, the, the flaps, to the ailerons or whatever that flip up and down, whatever, but you never see the wings all the way out at 90 degrees. It's just an odd little thing. And because of the transformation, the jet exhaust nozzles can open and close. And now the transition to gear walk mode starts out very simply fold up the landing gear and that's it. Now the Valkyries have the capability of initiating a VTOL approach which means the the, the uh, engines fold down and then you get this form just sits like that. Now it could be considered gearwalk form with the arms still stored in the undercarriage but yeah, it's, it's fighter mode to me. Very nice very clicky tails here. Listen to this. Very solid. Very solid. Pull the arms out. God. Wee. Wee. I didn't have that problem on any of the others. On the other hand, this is a brand new toy. Even though the molds are from 82, the machine work on this was pretty darn good. And then you fold these tabs down. Percent. Tab out, just set like that. And then you get the VF1A in Gearwalk mode. Posability enters the scene here. 
the arm's very nice. There's ratcheting joint there. These both elbow joints swivel, and the other shoulder joint. They don't quite go out to 90 degrees. They they go just below 90 degrees. So that's that's eh. When you fold the shoulders, um, oops. When you fold the shoulders um, forward or backwards, they'll actually bump up against the wings and they'll actually push up back on it there. So best to just leave the wings in their kind of supersonic position. It's not, oops, it's not open all the way. See, there it is open all the way. It's not open all the way. It's actually twisted back a little. The trademark, well, the, the, the best way to identify the 155 scale Takatoku Toys Valkyries is that the arms in Gearwalk mode are very diagonal to uh, the rest of the body. I mean, in, in the movie, in the series, the arms are pointed straight down, no problem there, but it's just because this, this laser cannon, whatever this is, bumps up against the transformation and shoulder joint here. So, you know, there's not really much you can do about that, so. The legs, unfortunately, probably the biggest failing here, is that the legs don't point any further forward and they don't twist either. So, so that is about as far as you can go with the legs, as far as posability go. The ankles also do not twist forward or backward, even though they're, you know, they're, they're, they're still, each foot is, is, is geared up so it'll open and close on its own. So, eh. For accessories, the VF1A Super Valkyrie comes with a gun pod, which we all know, love, and cherish. And it'll only fit into the right hand because the left hand is closed up. So you can do that. Or what you can do is you're provided a special accessory clip. And the clip goes here. And the reason that this happens, it just slips in there, is because when it's in fighter mode, four times I've had the chance to do this. Each time I talked about it, I told myself, um, Ava, you're going to get this done sooner or later. you got to do this on camera because you've talked about it four times previously. Maybe on the fifth time you'll actually get it done. As I explained, in Gearwalk mode, the gun pod fits into a, a little slotted whatever it is. fits into the arm like that and it slips underneath. And then I said, you know, well, it goes under here. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to show you... On the fifth and final try, no doubt, why it is that this doesn't work, you can see here barely the slot that that accessory clip fits into. And then what you would do is, <laughs> and, and here you see why, I can split them apart like this and it'll have room. I can try and do this with one hand. Um, this was rehearsed, you can tell. And then you could fit it in here like this. Now, because the friction alone is holding the gun pod in there, but you can see if this were resting on the ground, the gun pod and the little trigger sensor on the bottom there, it would not rest. It wouldn't rest because you can see things get distorted and it just, it just wouldn't work. But that is where uh, the gun pod usually rests in fighter mode. And now the transition to bad trade mode. In 1982, one of the biggest problems, even though the Valkyries are very clever and ingenious in the way it transforms, one of the biggest problems that toy and model companies had to deal with was how to get the engine, int engine intakes, and thus the hips, from up here to way down here. Well, you couldn't really do it physically. Um, Takatoku Toys was one of the first to find a practical application without actually physically taking things off or providing replacements or additional accessory clips. They're the ones who keep the Valkyrie intact. And so you'll notice that you have these metal clip here on this side and, you know, the bars here on either side. And what happens is the hips swing down along that. Now, in the official, well, the animation in the series is too fast, and most likely they didn't animate it in, but official line art, you know, behind the scenes stuff, says that there's a pair of hydraulic pistons which goes from, goes from here and actually fits underneath here. Well, what happens is, during the transformation, the, hip, the pistons, pistons go from up here, and they swing the, swing the hip down, 
and then there's a there's a joint which pops out of here grabs onto the hip and then the pistons flip back and just kind of are hidden underneath there while there's plenty of space in between well Takatoku Toys obviously couldn't do that because there's not nearly enough space. They had to make room for the chest, you know, and you know they didn't have enough room in there for the the metal casings and things like that. So they had these metal bars instead, and it just flips along those. And you can see there's a there's a little plastic tab in there. Tab A fits into slot B, you know. It's a very solid connection though. I'm gonna make this look all neat and clean before I pan up. There you go, neat and clean. Oh yeah. You'd think I'd have figured this out by now. The cockpit canopy is removable. So you actually can see inside there. And they provided a replacement that fits in there just easily enough, like that. And then you fold the chest down over it. Of course this means that this thing's really loose because I folded the chest down, head up, tab A, slot B. It goes there, and you get the VF1A in Batroid mode. Posability is simple enough. I've already explained how the arms twist and turn and blah 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 blah, blah things like that. The, the hips can pivot up to that point, and if you want to be weird, the knee can also do that. But primarily, it's supposed to do that. And like I said, these all ratchet very nicely. They're meant to hold this thing up. Yeah, I see they twist very easily. They're meant to hold it up without any problems. And again, the ankles are like that, too. The head is also nice. You can also twist the head back and forth. Now, just because of the way the transformation works, you see there's a little tab back there which actually moves back and forth a little bit along with the head. Sometimes it gets caught on the top and it won't push back. Just pull back and it'll fit fine. And then the cannon can flip forward and back like that. So, one of the other posing options you have, and really, it only does it, if, if this toy had come with missiles, then this would have been an option. Uh, but since it doesn't, you don't have to worry about the the wings can open up. And sometimes they do this in the series, but usually it's because they still have missile pods hanging from the hard points. Well, instead you could just leave the wings closed all the time. And these are a little loose. Well, a little loose. I mean, they still they still click, but there's some give in both both sets of wings. And then you can also fit the accessory clip on here. That onto there, that onto there, and that's it. Now the reason that the gun pod has that little little sensor thingy on the top is because this set was designed to accept projectiles. Now, these projectiles are shaped pretty much like their their air-to-air -air missiles that they use in the series. So they're actually just about the same scale too. They're about an inch long. Nothing special, just small, solid plastic ABS. These toys come from the time when you didn't have to worry about poking your eye out or anything like that. So they didn't, so this is like a old school spring powered stuff. All you do is you take this and you stick it in like that and voila. And all you do is press the trigger on top and those things will fly. They fly a very long distance. They go a good they go a good three or four feet all by themselves and obviously it's not something you want to stick in your eye or point at your nose or anything like that. St well, let me see. Stick up your nose and poke in your eye along those lines. And this was the basic set that you got with the um, the Valkyries. Uh, when, the, when they came out just in 1982, this is everything that you got. So, but now obviously it's a repaint, so the coloring, coloring and decals and things like that are going to be different. But this was this was everything that you got in the basic Valkyrie set in 1982.
Now this is not just a straight Valkyrie set. This is a Super Valkyrie set, which means it's going to come with a Super Type Fast Pack. Now this toy was originally designed in 1982 just to transform all by itself. Uh, how do I know this? Well, simple, because all of the Fast Pack armor I'm about to show you to depend on itself to just kind of cling and hang on there rather than actually attaching via uh, slots or tabs or buttons or anything like that. So this toy was clearly designed at a time when they weren't expecting the, the super fast packs to come out in the series. They weren't expecting the series to do as well as it did. So clearly the, the super fast pack was designed afterwards. One example of this is they have an accessory clip that actually fits over the edge because you can't get the boosters in there put these in there like that. And like I said, it's just these little clips, these little tiny clips on here on either that, that fit onto either side of the blast shield there. And then you get the boosters using friction only to fit onto there and onto there. Like I said, these are held on with friction. The missile launchers, the additional missile launchers, I know they look like cannon barrels. They are cannon bar barrels. But really, they're supposed to be missile launchers. Just clips over the front and back. By the way, in, in case you're thinking that this thing, this particular toy is in pristine condition, I actually broke one of the tabs of these missile launchers off during photography when I was shooting the images for the review itself. So uh, don't think that I'm any more immune to it than any other kids were in the last 26, 27 years, something like that. The legs are a little more complicated. And again, this is because of just how things were done. Um, you know, ordinarily you probably would have had something that just snap here and snap here and that's it. Well, you've actually got this, this little plastic tab along the outside here. And what you do, you slip this. There's actually a pair of prongs or whatever they are here that actually wrap around the flight stabilizer here. You hold the primary tank in place. And then you can carefully insert those two tabs there into holes in the bottom of the fuel tank and again it uses friction only so you don't want to push too hard or else you're going to break something in here lather rinse repeat that goes just like that and then you get the BF-1A Super Valkyrie in Batroid mode Now, for older versions, not this, because this was made in 2008, so it's brand spanking new. Actually, this was filmed in 2009. Um, there's a tab. In, or, in order to prevent the backpack from folding over backwards, because it is a bit on the heavy side, there's a, there's a plastic tab underneath there, which presses up against these very, uh, very givey wings, these very loose wings. And so one of the things you couldn't do as these toys get older and older, is you can't pose it with the wings open. Now, because the joint under there for the, the just the basic Valkyrie's backpack, not even with the fast pack, the, the, the white thruster unit or whatever it is, ordinarily over time, and this will probably happen to this one as well, that joint will wear out, and eventually what will happen is this will drop down. But for the time being, I can leave the wings open. Now, the reason... So you would just have to leave the wings closed like that. But, since I'm going to might as well transform it back to Gearwalk mode, you do kind of have to have the boosters fold out like that. Wing wing. It goes like that. It folds down. Up you go. Go like that. And last, but certainly not least, then you get the VF-1A Super Valkyrie in 
Gearwalk mode. Posability is the same in Gearwalk mode. Um, the only little nitpick you have to worry about in Gearwalk mode when transitioning back to fighter mode, that is, the only thing you have to worry about is that the missile launchers cover up the the the, the fist deployment switches. Ordinarily, uh, you know, with without the super or without the fastback armor, you could just fold that in and out by yourself. But you actually had to take the armor off in order to extend it and putting back in, no problem. As I shall demonstrate here. See, don't have to take the armor off. The other disadvantage of the armor is that um, you can't use the you can't use the accessory clip on the arms here. It's just just not designed for it. And honestly, why would you need it there? And you have the VTOL, Super Valkyrie. Now, um, one last modifier that you have to make is that usually when the Valkyrie is all by itself, the leg hangs straight, but since it has this additional armor and stuff on it, you actually have to curve the leg downward a little bit. And of course, that's the way it does it in the series as well, and the movies. And then you get the VF-1A Super Valkyrie in fighter mode. And the gear's a little loose in front. The 2008 Origin of Valkyrie line is more than just a bunch of repaints. It is bringing back classics. So several of these sets, none in particular here, were reissued in 2002. Uh, but the line was cut short for whatever reason. It just didn't run for very long. Uh, so in 2008, we got a second shot at it. Uh, there isn't, I'll, I'll be honest and say there isn't the variety here that I would have liked. It's nice to see the movie versions of the VF-1As come out, because we haven't seen those before. Perhaps the biggest problem for me with this line was the light gray coloring, which they all share, which none of them have in the series. The, if you look at the boxes for each of these, very, very well, very well designed boxes. I can't read a hoot of anything that's on there because I can't read Japanese. Um, if you look at the photos, the the studio photos, they're all white. They're 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 obviously pre-production models that they used. The coloring is off, and so to have them all in light gray doesn't make any sense. I mean, you can easily do white, man. I easily do white. Uh, equally so with the two VF-1A Super Valkyries. These are obviously, in the box photos, they're obviously light blue. Obviously light blue. And yet you went with green. Another pick, the original Takutoku Valkyries, when they were released in 82, pretty much everything you saw was decals and you had to apply it yourself. Uh, the exception was some of the stripes that were on here, but otherwise the majority of the labels uh, you know, the, the, the warning labels, the, the, I don't know what the hell these things are. Somebody please tell me what these little circle with lines are. Tell me what those are, because I have no idea what they are. You, and you see them in more than Macross. So that's, that's what I want to know about. These seem to be the first time you see them. But anyways, while it was nice to see the majority of things were stamped on here, some things like the shoulders, uh, the shoulders are really, for, for, for the video and the photos that I've been shooting, the shoulders were the only decals that I added, both front and back. And I can already tell with the two 1As, the, both of the VF-1As and with the VF-1S in particular, uh, the labels are wide enough. There's actually a little transparent um, excess around each of the decals. And the problem is that these are going to peel off eventually for me, you know, transforming these back and forth, and they're going to get dusty. And that's a bit of a problem. You don't have to worry with about worry about it with the the VF1Js, is because they're just little small triangles. And, you know that's it. Uh, while it's nice to have the extra labels and things like that, I think it would have been nice for me if the labels hadn't been there at all. You can leave the stripes on there and the 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 UN Spacey and the 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 VF and you know there, there's a couple things on there you could leave, but the majority of these labels I didn't want. The coloring is 
bleh. Okay, it shouldn't have been light gray. All of these have white. They should be white. Instead, we got light gray. Uh, I will say, though, that the, the coloring accuracy is good for the two 1A, uh, both of the VF1As. And then, as you'll notice, for Hikaru Ichicho's version, he has the red skull and crossbones, but then for Max Genius, you get the blue skull and crossbones. Which was, I mean, that that's something that actually happens in the, you don't get the, the Macross, the UN Spacey uh, Delta Kite symbol, you get the, the skull and crossbones from the squadron. So that was a, a, a very nice touch right there. Uh, if there was anything that I could change other than the coloring and the labels, because those are just decorations, I mean, you know, decorations. These, these are all repaints, by the way, with the exception of the heads. They're all the same. If I had to change anything, I would say I would like to have seen the 1990 reissue of the VF-1S head, where it actually looked, you know, like anime accurate. And I would like to have seen the prototype for the VF-1J's head produced, because that would have been uh, a really, really nice thing to have. And so the origin of Valkyrie line is great. I love it. It's, it's, I, I love these toys. I think these toys are awesome. The coloring, the labels, that's a bit of a problem. That's just a nitpick. But these toys are still wonderful. I love these things. You know how much I love these things? This is how much I love these guys. I've got five of them. Started with this guy in 91, and it continued in 2000, well, 2009, with these four. I heard I hear comments that they're chunky monkey, that they're old, they're well, they're chunky monkey. And you know what? Chunky monkey works for me. Okay, these are toys. These are not they're collectors' items for nostalgic sake because you know you had them when you were a kid. But for me, the engineering works. Okay, so the legs don't transform the same way. Big deal. So the arms are tilted a little outwards. Big deal. These are toys, okay? These, the, the Valkyrie is an awesome design, which has been replicated many times over. There, there was debate on CDX as to whether or not I should even cover these, cover five of these. I mean, yeah, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Well, for me, they may be repaints, okay? They're repaints, okay? I acknowledge that, fine, whatever. But they're awesome enough that I, if, if given the opportunity, I would have gotten these these, these additional four on my own, okay? Not just that, but when the opportunity came, I would have gotten these four. There are still three or four more other repaints of the Takatoku Valkyries I'd like to get. Now, to be fair, yes, I too would like some of these uh, 2.0 Yamato 160 scales. I definitely want to like to get a, a VF-1S Strike Valkyrie Hikaru version. Definitely. I would love to. That 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 is... One of the things you have to understand is I've been waiting for 15 years or whatever for them to make giant transformable toys like this. I've said it in every review. These are the guys that I based all transforming Valkyries on. And even, even non-Macros toys. These are the standard by which I go by. You know, there's more articulation in some of the other figures, but does it stand up to this? Do you have to worry about breaking things? Okay, so you've got a couple little tabs, and if you, you know, force the tails on this guy, it's going to, you know, it's going to break. But these, these, these things stand the test of time, and that's something that I don't think some of these toys in the, first, in the second millennium can stand up to. The Yamatos, I would like to get them, but they are display pieces. These are not display pieces. From the start, they were not meant to be display pieces. These are meant to be bumped around. So they're, they're rugged, they're durable, they're Chunky Monkey. I love the Chunky Monkey, okay? I think Chunky Monkey is great. Okay. Now, on the other hand, I'm not going to replace any of these guys with the Yamatos. One of the ways I know I'm pressing the limit or whatever is because my old VF1S, his ears always go back, like he's mad at me or something. So I know when his ears are up, that's a good thing. These are wonderful toys. I highly recommend getting them. Okay, I can't say enough. I could go on and on and on for another five minutes, or whatever. In fact, I did in a previous take. So, if you get a chance. Get at least one, okay? There's a reason the line was called Origin of Valkyrie, okay? There's a reason it's called that. Because this is what the toy was meant to be. Highly recommended. Highest recommendations. Finally, I would like to pass a very heartfelt and special thank you out to uh, CollectionDX.com's own CFO and co-owner, Shogun Dan, 
he gave me all four of these. These were all originally his. He bought these. He paid for these. They were in his house. He actually opened up one of these. He didn't do anything with it, but he actually opened up one of these. And he called me on the phone. He called me on the phone and he said, Ava, I can't do these. I don't have time to do these. I would like to do these, but I just don't have time to do it. We have, we have the New York Toy Fair coming up. We've got all kinds of action behind the scenes going on here. I do not have time to do this. Ava, would you like to cover these? Needless to say, I said, Fuck yeah. So, Shogun Dan, I, I've said it four times before, now I'm going to say it again. It was Christmas 91 all over. That four-foot box came to my door and just, oh, that was awesome. I love that. So, Shogun Dan, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, 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 I can't say thank you enough, okay? It's going to sound real boring on video, and I'll even say it on the text reviews, but Shogun Dan, Thank you. I, I really appreciate what you did. And I don't know how I'm going to pay you back for this, man. I really don't. I feel, I feel I owe you a debt of gratitude, and I don't know where to start. This is AVUnit4A for CollectionDX.com, signing off. <laughs>